Hello folks, my name is Mark. This is Why the World. How are you guys doing? So there's been this, this documentary about Michael Jackson. Uh, basically, um, you know, where a lot of uh, people have... Some details have come out about his, you know, um, accusations of him being a child molester and stuff like that. And that kind of got me thinking a little bit, you know. Um, when is it okay to separate an artist from their art and can you still appreciate art that is produced by a person who is despicable you know and i i don't know how easy of a question this is to answer okay um now i'm gonna just admit first off i have some bias because i like michael jackson <laughs> all right i like his music I, I grew up in the 80s so michael jackson was a superstar beyond any superstar that we have today. That kind of got me thinking about, you know, like when, you know, is it like in order for me to remain ideologically consistent, right? Would I never be allowed to enjoy any of his art anymore? Right? Like, you know, because nobody wants to support pedophilia. So does it mean that if I listen to Thriller, <clears throat> am I in some way supporting Michael Jackson and indirectly supporting his actions. I don't know how easy of a question that is to answer because I think in some instances you can't, in some instances you cannot separate the artist from their art, you know. Uh, an example of this, um, let's say uh, John, you know, John Wayne Gacy, you know, serial killer, right? Uh, he was a guy that um, would dress up as a clown and kidnap young boys and rape them and kill them, right? He's actually an artist. He was an artist. And, um, you know, would do paintings and stuff of creepy fucking clowns, <laughs> right? Now, let's say you went to a, um, an art, you know, somebody went and took all of his paintings out of storage and, and did an art show, a traveling art show, and you went to it, you know, could you appreciate his art without, you know, without linking that history of who he was with it? I don't think you can, you know. I think that would just be like an interesting, you know, window into the mind of a crazy person, of a serial killer and stuff. But I don't think anybody would say, oh, I, I appreciate this picture of this evil clown for itself. <laughs> and not because it's John Wayne Gacy's, you know, sicko, disgusting fucking psychological horror thing put on canvas right i don't think anybody can do that or another thing is like um let's say you know hitler was actually a painter right if they had an art show with hitler's paintings in it no one's gonna go there to like appreciate you know hitler's fucking you know realism or whatever in his in his fucking watercolors <laughs> right that's just not happening i don't think you could separate it from that but you know let's take uh you know in, in other instances maybe you can you know, like uh, Michael Jackson, for instance. You know, I like Thriller. I mean, it's it's. I think it's a good record. <laughs> I like some songs. Uh, I like you know Billie Jean. I like. I think it's a good song. You know, but can I enjoy it knowing what I know about Michael Jackson? Which, in all probability, he most likely is guilty. I mean, we don't have any actual proof <laughs> one way or the other, but the signs are pointing towards yes. You know, can I still enjoy it? Right. You know, I mean, because it's this is something that's happening with a lot of people lately. You know, we're getting um, people like Kevin Spacey. You know, who uh, got accused of um, you know using his position to like, you know, force people underage people to have sex with them and shit. You know, um, another one is uh, Bill Cosby. You know accused of raping 19 different people or 23 different people. I don't know, a shitload of people over the over 30, 40 years. Right. Well, you know, I grew up watching The Cosby Show. <laughs> right. It was on every single night. You know, I mean, what does that say? You know, this is this whole time, you know, you're watching his his, you know, TV shows and listening to his comedy albums. And you don't know that this person is actually like doing all of this crazy, ridiculous illegal, disgusting, immoral stuff, you know, <laughs> right? 
can you enjoy the Cosby show now if you try to watch it? Like, I don't know. I don't think a lot of people could. Right. But, you know, then, then, then it, then it kind of becomes a question of where do you draw the line? Like, okay, is it like other behaviors are okay, but not rape and murder, right? Like, for example, there was, um, there's a, uh, comedy special by a woman named Hannah Gadsby, and it's called Nanette on, um, you know, Netflix, right? And it's pretty, uh, it's pretty much not a comedy show. It's more of a TED talk, to be honest. Um, there's some jokes. There's like one joke <laughs> at the beginning. And then she even says that like in her comedy, you know, special, she says after this point, no more jokes. Right. And she talks about how, you know, um, the violence and stuff that comes with being, you know, um, being a uh, gay basically. <laughs> right. And now she got, you know, assaulted and all this other stuff. And it, it's pretty like, you know, you watch it and you're just like, damn, it's pretty, pretty, uh, gut wrenching, I guess is a good way, you know, and it really kind of hits you right in the face. You know, it's actually really good. I think you should go watch it. But as I was watching that with my wife, one thing she says, she, she makes a, a comment about Picasso right and i was like oh what's what's going on with picasso where she basically said something to the effect of he's painting vagina vases for his penis flower or something like that basically calling picasso a you know womanizing scumbag who only like painted with his dick and i kind of took some offense to that i was like what picasso what the fuck are you talking about well then you look it up and Turns out Picasso actually was kind of a womanizer and not just, not only was he a skirt chaser, he actually liked him young, <laughs> right? And if Picasso would have lived in the modern day with that kind of behavior, he probably would be having the same thing. It, you know, we'd be calling him a pedophile, right? It just so happened that when Picasso was alive, this, this kind of thing wasn't illegal. <laughs> right and you go wow well fuck i didn't know that i didn't know picasso was a fucking you know was a fucking like pedophile and shit i mean yeah i mean they were like they were like teenagers you know 17 <laughs> right 17 18 shit like that 16 i think one of one of the girls was 16 right but you know then you start thinking about it. it's like well picasso also was like a world-renowned painter you know, I don't, I don't think anyone out there is going to deny his contribution to, to the arts out there, right? So does that mean that because of Picasso's, you know, um, immoral sexual behavior, do we not count his achievements anymore? Right. Can we separate Picasso's art from the man, basically? It's like... Well, I mean, he didn't murder anyone. He didn't technically didn't rape anybody. I mean, because it wasn't considered rape back then, although today it would be, <laughs> right? I don't know. You know, that's not it. I can, can I answer? Some people, I guess, would say yes. I, but at the same time, it's like he was also a genius, you know? Yeah, I mean, when does it, I guess the question then becomes like, when does it not become acceptable? Because you're going to find that a lot of artists have very extreme lives, you know, like when is it too much? When, when do you say, okay, this person is too despicable for me to acknowledge their contribution in whatever field they were in, you know, cause if you're talking comedians, I mean, a lot of comedians have said a lot of very, very, you know, unpolitically correct things even even people who aren't guilty of you know anything illegal you know eddie murphy for example like i don't know if you seem delirious but it's extremely homophobic <laughs> okay this shit is not you know it's something that would never fly today right it's extremely homophobic you know calling uh i don't know just go watch it if you've never seen it it's also funny <laughs> and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna like you know um I'm not going to deny it. I mean, I was a big Eddie Murphy fan and looking back on, on his comedy in a modern context, it's extremely hateful, 
but it's funny as hell. You know, George Carlin, right, makes uh, jokes about the N-word. He makes anti-feminist jokes. I think, oh, which one of you ladies wants to make me a steak and give me a blowjob or something? And then, you know, that got a huge laugh and all that stuff, right? That's something that would never fly today, but, you know, he also has a point in a lot of his comedy about the, uh, the restrictiveness of language, <laughs> right? And how language can be used to, to craft what and how people think and it's still very relevant today i think you know and even though like that brand of comedy nowadays is reserved to like you know shitty youtubers and 4chan memes and shit it's still pretty meaningful you know so i mean he says a lot of of racist uh things even though i don't i don't think anyone's gonna say george carlin was a racist but he had some like you know uh, jokes about the n-word stuff like that right does that mean we're just never allowed to watch George Carlin again we're never allowed to watch Eddie Murphy again I mean I, I don't know about that I, I don't think that's you know the way to go um, I mean you'll find even a lot of people that you know even taking it from the progressive side right which is believe it or not where my politics lie <laughs> okay I know a lot of you people have you know, when I say shit like this, it doesn't seem like it, but no, I, I actually am pretty progressive. But people like uh, Martin Luther King Jr., you know, he was accused of cheating on his wife, right? Uh, Malcolm X was a thief. I mean, he even admitted it before he was, before he converted. That's, you know, he converted in prison, didn't he? <laughs> right? I mean, um, even people like, like Stephen Hawking had a sex scandal, you know? David Carradine, you know, he fucking you know, died because of autoerotic asphyxiation. At least that's the rumor. You know, does that mean I, I shouldn't watch Kung Fu because the guy that the main star was a fucking pervert? You know? Uh, Frida Kahlo, that's a, a very famous painting, female, uh, you know, Mexican painter, the lady with the unibrow and stuff. She was very unfaithful in her marriages. You know, kind of notorious for that. Right? Well, I mean, and then you talk about, like, rock stars. Like, pretty much every fucking rock star you've ever can name has had a drug problem, <laughs> right? Has cheated on their wives and husbands, you know? And not just people like Jimi Hendrix either, or, or not even like the, the, the real like extreme people like Gigi Allen, you know, or like Seth Putnam from the Anal Cunts or something. Like, not guys like that who just party hard and burn out and die of drug overdoses, but even ordinary, normal, you know, normal musicians they it's notorious they you know it's 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 a stereotype almost at this point you know robert downey jr has been in fucking you know uh rehab more times than you can count i think he's a good actor you know does that sully does that mean that i shouldn't watch any of his movies because he's a fucking drug addict you know or former drug addict or former alcoholic like i you know at what point can you separate that you know what i'm saying it's like is it only the rapists and murderers that you're not allowed to not allowed to acknowledge were also geniuses or is it everybody who does anything that's even slightly bad <laughs> right no i don't i don't think so i think you have to take it on a case by case basis i think the only way it makes sense is to do that just each person you judge personally whether or not you you know can basically, you know, enjoy their art and whether or not their personal baggage gets in the way. I think probably with some people it does, you know. Some people I admit I want it to, you know, like, uh, you know, Louis C.K. I think Louis C.K. Is, is hilarious, you know, but at the same time, I understand that, yeah, his career is probably over. And you know what? I wish it wasn't, <laughs> right? I wish it wasn't. And if you put out a, 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 you know, a comedy special, I'd probably watch it. But I don't know if I'd pay for it, <laughs> okay? I don't know if I'm there yet. It's like, I don't know if I want to be rewarding this guy, you know? Maybe, you know, but when, when would you say, when, you know, can somebody like him be forgiven? Like, what if he were to, like, you know, devote the next five or ten years of his life to going out and giving talks about how what he did was bad and you know and donate money and shit to like you know 
rape crisis centers and stuff like that. You know, can somebody, somebody like him ever be redeemed? I mean, technically he didn't kill anyone, <laughs> right? I don't know. I guess that's, I think some people out there would say never. You know, I think a lot of a lot of people out there, a lot of feminists and things would say, nope, to a one strike, you're out, that's it. Me, personally, I don't know. I think, I think maybe there's a line that you don't cross. And has he crossed it yet? I don't know, maybe. I still think that he's funny. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm sorry, I, I can't, you know, I still think he's funny. And it's just like, I, I, and I think it's it's not fair as well to judge people in the past according to modern, you know, standards. Uh, something comes to mind, I actually saw this on um, Deep Fat Fried, it's uh, TJ Kirk, you know, the Amazing Atheists uh, podcast where they were talking about Bill Hicks and some, you know, some comedian that was like basically criticizing Bill Hicks and saying that, you know, his comedy wasn't funny and shit. And then they showed this, it was like this lesbian social justice warrior comedian. And then they showed her video and it was like the most unfunny shit ever. And it's like, yeah, you know, like they shouldn't be doing that either. You should, do, you know, you should try to take it, their comedy in the context of when it came out. <laughs> right. And, you know, was it offensive and bigoted when it came out? Well, most of the time, yes. But society was different. You know, look at it like that. You know, another example, H.P. Uh, Lovecraft. Right. Um, H.P. Lovecraft wrote some of the most racist shit ever. I don't know if you've ever read any of his books, you know, but... Basically, he wrote about monsters and all this other thing, and it's all code words for non-whites, <laughs> right? And, you know, all the monsters and the, the degenerate people are all basically anyone who isn't white in his, in his stories, right? But at the same time, there's, you know, generations of people who have taken inspiration from his work. And he basically created the, uh, you know, weird horror genre, and there's like an entire industry of H.P. Lovecraft stuff, video games and tabletop games and toys and all this shit that's out there now. And the original source material is fucking racist as hell. It's like, I don't know. I mean, would it be different? I guess, I, mean, I guess it's because maybe a lot of times passed. Like, would it be different if H.P. Lovecraft, you know, was alive today? Probably, probably yes, you know. By today, you should know better. And I guess that's kind of what it is. I guess that's I guess that's what it is at this point in our lives, <laughs> right? In our evolution as a as a society, you should know better. So maybe that factors into it a little bit. You can still enjoy Eddie Murphy's comedy. You can still enjoy the you know the Cosby Show and even Louis C.K.'s comedy. I think you can still enjoy Thriller, right? As long as you take that you take it as a whole and you understand who this person was that created this art, you know, I think it is possible in most cases. But, you know, like I said, it's got to be a one, a one on one thing. You know, I don't think you can just put a blanket rule across everybody. You have to take each person in their own context and decide, <laughs> right, whether or not you're going to, you know, whether or not you can, it's acceptable to you. I don't know. But Personally, I still think Michael Jackson, Jackson is acceptable because, you know, Thriller is an awesome record. Anyway, that's all I got, folks. Adios.